Welcome to a new video on my channel. Today, I have another trading strategy for you that works based on a trading view indicator. This indicator provides us with buy and sell signals, and we only have one rule to follow to determine whether to take a buy signal or a sell signal. You will see that it works extremely simply. This can be applied to cryptocurrencies, forex, and other assets. It is a scalping strategy, meaning it operates on one, three, or five minute time frames. I personally use it on the five minute chart. I have backtested all of this, and not just backtested. I have been doing this for days. I would sit down in the evening and enter the new results so that I could see how it performs when I live trade. And now, I will show you the results that have come out. Or rather, I should say, I will first show you how to use the indicator, and then we will look at the results. First of all, we will use the Trader XO Macro Trend Scanner by BTC Charlie. That's the first indicator, and the second one is the EMA, Exponential Moving Average. We also need the EMA as confirmation for when to go long or short. With the EMA, we do nothing different except changing the length from 9 to 200, and I like to make the line a little thicker. Now, there are actually only two rules to follow. Rule number one, long signals. When a long signal appears and the candle closes above the 200 EMA line, we enter a long position. The same applies to a short signal. Only when the chart breaks below the 200 EMA line, as we can see here, and a short signal appears, do we enter a short position. This means we don't take a long position below the 200 EMA line or a short position above the 200 EMA line. Rule number two, it is simple. Don't break rule number one. But how do we proceed? In this case, let's take this trade as an example. As we go through a few signals, you will understand the details. We now have a long signal, which means with the candle closing, in this case, we use a risk reward ratio of two to one. In this case, our last swing low was here. We would take that and then we have a risk reward ratio of one to 1.67. We adjust it to 1 to 2, so it becomes a 2 to 1 risk reward ratio. And we could have achieved that with this candle. Why do we do it this way? Of course, we could have made much more profit here, but you will see how often that is achieved in later trades and then the chart reverses. That means if you really don't want to take risks, you stick to the rule. The good thing is, you always incur fewer losses than the profits you make. In this case, it was a 7.23% profit trade. But if we look at this bearish signal, for example, if we had taken that as a small fake signal, if you want to see it, you would have noticed that our last swing high was here, resulting in a losing trade. That's why we don't do it. We really stick to the good trades. Let's continue looking. We might have missed this trade, for example, but we stick to the rule. Here we have a bearish signal. Let's include this bearish signal as well. If we look at it here, our risk reward ratio of 2 to 1, we also achieved this trade here and won with an 11.85% trade using this candle. This long signal, even if it might have been valid, we would not take it. Here we have another bear signal, a short signal in this case. We enter here as well. Last swing high, meaning where were the last high candles, and we again look for a risk reward ratio of 2 to 1. You see, we could obviously take much more in some cases, but we don't take that risk. Trust me when I say I have tested this extensively. In this case, we also have this bear signal. No, we don't take it because the bear signal was actually valid before. In this case, we have this bear signal. Our last swing high was here. We could also consider this one and had a risk reward ratio of 1 to 2. Here we see the 1 to 2, and we also took this one. We ignore another bull signal, and we ignore the bear signal if new ones come in between. We are only interested in how this trade ends either in a loss or a profit. And here we had another one, you see, there are really many trades that end in a profit. I suspect this one was a profit. Let's take a look here. No, that wouldn't have been a profit if we took the candle high. It would probably have worked with the candle close, but in that case, the risk would have been more of a loss trade. Exactly, that's how it always looks. These are the rules we need to follow. Bull signals only above the EMA line and sell signals only below the EMA line because that's where we are. 
Let's see if this bull signal would have worked. Here's our last swing low. We took advantage of that, and we had a 1 to 2 ratio in that case. And that's the rules. If you are more willing to take risks, of course, you can try to take every trade. I really recommend not doing that. You see here, that would have been a lost trade, that would have been a lost trade. In contrast, if we had taken this short signal here, the longs would have resulted in losses, but we would have had a 2 to 1 ratio again and 1. Why am I showing this now? I have already calculated everything in advance. But I haven't just been backtesting, I actually, I started updating the trades daily from May 7th to May 19th as I checked the dates. Now you can see how many profitable trades there were based on the green check marks and how many lost trades there were based on the big X marks, the red X's. You see, it was really like I simply took every trade that was correct and then it just didn't develop. But of course, I also included every trade that was positive. You can see it live. It closed just below here, if I zoom in a bit. And you can see this trade was very, very good with 4.14% profit. Here's another small one. You can see these small swing highs with 1.32%. This one was also profitable with 2.54%. That was the losing trade. It had a 1.48% loss. But then we had three shorts in a row. No, that was a loss trade. Sorry, two shorts in a row, 3.42% plus 2.68% profit. And now let's get to the results. From May 7th to May 19th, 2023, the risk-reward ratio, as mentioned, was 2.1. 39 trades were opened, 26 were profitable, and 13 were in loss. Therefore, the win rate amounts to 70%. The maximum consecutive losses were 4 trades, and the maximum consecutive wins were 8 trades. With a $10,000 account, assuming $1,000 per trade used, at 1x leverage, the gains amounted to 8.1%, which is $811 added to the $10,000, resulting in a profit of $811. At 10x leverage, it would be 81% on the $10,000 portfolio, totaling $8,110. And at 20x leverage, it would have been 162% with $16,000. However, I don't recommend anyone to use 20x leverage. Now, let me come to a list where I calculated it a bit for you. Here I am now with this list I just mentioned, and I calculated everything with 1x leverage, 10x leverage, and 20x leverage. And for the $10,000 account, you can calculate it easily, based on $1,000 per trade used. Here you can see 8%, 14%. Even the four consecutive loss rates were still acceptable, in this case around 3.9%, 3.7%. But if we increase everything to 10x leverage, then it becomes much riskier. If we add up the losses of 39, 36, 35, and 40%, it's about 130% that are lost here, which is approximately $1,300 lost. Although in the next trade, we won back $760, $910, and just under $400 based on the percentages. But for trading psychology, it's not good to have four trades in a row ending like this. That's why I mentioned that 20x leverage would be really critical. For people who like to trade riskily, they can, of course, do it because here we have trades with 286%, 178% minus. But losing four trades to such an extent is not for everyone. And below the calculations, you can see the profits. Also, what I showed you, how much goes into the portfolio. Take a look at it, test it in your own chart. If you have a less volatile chart, maybe take a risk-reward ratio of 1 to 1.5. But you will see how profitable it is if you stick to it and don't deviate. This rule is very important. Stick to it, open the trade, set it up. Preferably don't look at it until you get a signal on your smartphone or computer that tells you, hey, now the trade is over, and then you look into it. That's simply the best thing you can do for trading psychology. And then you move on to the next signal. Tell me your opinion about the indicator. I would appreciate it if you leave some comments and like the video. Until the next video. Bye.